Hello, Honar Harmonetta players of the world. I have a really exciting discovery to share with you all. This is going to allow you to amplify and record your Harmonetta with a crystal clear sound so you get a nice even tone from the top and the bottom of the instrument. When you're on stage, it gives you freedom of movement. And I think it sounds really, really good. It has a volume control that sounds that works very, very well. And I think the next most important thing is that it's very, very affordable. It, I think it will be within reach to almost all players out there. I would like to say that I was just doing research on various microphones um, over, the, over about two months and, uh, and other bits of hardware. And so I bought this equipment with my own money this, making this video is not a fulfillment of an agreement with any of the companies to uh, talk about them. So this is completely unbiased opinion. I just really, really like how it works. I got really, really lucky with making the right purchase. And uh, that's why I would like to share it with you all. I am a Honer performing artist, but Honer hasn't made one of these in about... Uh, about 40 years since the 1980s. Um, this is in fact one that I restored myself since about May of 2023, this year. I've started repairing harmonettas for players around the world. So now I'm going to talk about the equipment that I bought. So here is the microphone system. It's by a company called Comica. Here's the model number. It's the dual lavalier mic system. This is originally designed for doing interviews um, and plugging into directly into your smartphone as a camera or also into a standalone camera. And it comes with a ton of equipment all neatly packed into this nice semi hard case right here as a zipper. And uh, unfortunately, I didn't do any filming of like how it was packed, but I will tell you that it was amazing how they crammed everything in here very neatly, very well packaged. So here it is, the mostly empty case. And it comes with a charger. Um, all you have to do is to just get a charging dock and like from your cell phone and you're all good to go. Mine came charged already, and the battery life should last up to 100 hours on idle. So I've used mine, I've had it on for at least, uh, I, I guess maybe about 8 hours at the most, and I've never charged it yet, and it's still going strong. So that's a great sign. It comes with this adapter here, 8th inch adapters. And some of the most important things well it comes with the microphone here's one of them the other i've attached to the harmonetta well here's one of them and it comes with the windscreen directly on it and you can remove it now and it also comes with some other attachments such as these what the what they call dead cat muffs <laughs> um, if you're in a windy situation like outside uh, the wind it's going to block out the wind much more than a foam one would now, I actually ended up losing the other foam one, so I'm going to just demonstrate the Harmonetta using just a microphone with no windscreen. And then here is the power block or the control panel. So it has one end goes out to an eighth inch to an eighth inch. And this is roughly, I'm going to guess, around four feet long. And... Uh, all of the attachments that go into here, all they're all eighth inch jacks, and um, it has a screw on lock here, so you, you can't pull it out. Uh, the other end, the microphones are two separate lines, and they plug into two separate inputs. Here we added some gaff tape um, when we were at Spa already, so um, so it's like that. And then now you have mono or stereo option which is probably really great if you are going to do interviews but 
For the Harmonata, we'll use mono for now. And it has a really good volume control. This is one of the reasons why I picked this one in particular, because volume control is just a huge plus. And also it gives you the on-off switch. So the on-off switch works like this. And when it's on, it gives you that blue light. So there's no confusion. And also it has this headphone jack right here. Hopefully the camera's focusing in on all of this. And then there's a belt clip. Um, the microphone cables, I have them wrapped up like this. I wrapped them up like this when I got home because they are very, very long. They're about 20 feet each. And what, what we did is um, with the microphones, we just added some gaff tape every eight inches or so to make it more like one unit. And uh, so another reason why I picked this is because it's two separate microphones, which we want to capture the sound from the Harmonetta. And then it's ending up with one chord. So it's being combined into one chord into the sound system. The next product that I want to talk about is is Rode. It's a eighth inch to XLR connector or converter. So it's the right specification for this. And all you do is simply plug, plug in and go. And it goes right into right into my interface over here, which is an Audion ID4. And it just plugs in just like that. Now in this segment, we're going to talk about how to attach these microphones to the Harmonetta for the best sound. And at SPA, we attached it much more securely with, with more tape. And uh, we found a way where the cords were not going to block the buttons and of course not go over the mouthpiece. We had this attached to AJ's Harmonetta a lot more securely than what I have right now. This is just good enough for at home and for this video demonstration. Basically, the, the best way that I found by testing at home was aiming the microphone towards the low end of the instrument. So it picks up the low notes more clearly while the rest of the notes, the middle octave, doesn't come out too strongly and same with the high notes. When I had the microphones pointed more directly at the middle and pointing straight out like, or straight through like that, um, the sound from the middle, from the notes in that octave, in the middle octave came out very, very strongly, same with the high notes, but the low notes came out quieter and kind of fuzzy. So I found that this position towards the low end, and same thing on the bottom side of the harmonetta, this gave the best balanced sound. Now, disclaimer, I am not a very experienced harmonetta player. I've had maybe less than four or five hours of actually kind of learning how to play this. So I want to uh, first demonstrate the issues of just playing it with a standard vocal microphone, what you might have on a, for an onstage situation if you pick up the harmonetta for one song and you're playing with other band members. It might be a little bit less of an issue if you're in a recording studio where you have an isolated booth and the microphone can pick everything out more easily. So let's pretend that we are on stage and we have just one vocal microphone. Most likely you, the best option that you have, especially if you're playing with other musicians so there's more sound on stage, is to have the microphone above the harmonetta. But there's some issues with this because of how the harmonetta is built. So I'll play C, C sharp, D, E flat, and E. I'll play in the low octave. And I'll play in the high octave. So you might be hearing some differences in the sound quality because of how the harmonet is built. Basically, you have a C whole tone scale on the top reed plate. So it comes out, the sound comes out from the top. 
And from the bottom replate, you have a C sharp whole tone scale. So if I play, for instance, the C, the sound is coming from the top. If I play a C sharp, the sound is coming from the bottom. And we can see this clearly with a Harmonetta with the cover plates taken off. This is actually a Harmonetta that I've just finished restoring and it's about to ship out to Canada. So if I play the C, we have all these brass valves at the top. Right now they're shut, they're closed. And if I press the C's, three of them lift up. Now if I press the C sharp, Nothing lifts up from the top, but it's lifting up from the bottom. So what I played is just single notes, but if I play, for instance, a C major chord, so if I play the C and the E, they come out from the top, but if I play the G of C major, C, E, G, it comes from the bottom. And if I play an A minor chord, C, A comes from the bottom, and C and E come from the top. Now if I play the C major chord and I, I flip the instrument upside down like this, an A minor chord, You might have heard that when I was playing the A minor chord while staying in my regular position with the microphone on above me, that you didn't hear that much of a difference in tone in the chord change. You might have saw my fingers move, but from underneath, you might have heard the change from the G to the A much more clearly. Another thing is in an acoustic situation, you might have an easier time. There's, there's kind of no issue um, without a microphone focus, without our sound being focused into a microphone. It sounds pretty much normal. So if I play the harmonetta from here, from a good distance away from the microphone, <laughs> The notes probably sound pretty even versus with the sound being focused into the microphone. You hear the difference pretty clearly. I'd like to quickly mention two players that have figured it out. This is the late Bob Herndon who had these custom microphones made in the 1950s. The microphones are totally encased and they attach themselves to the harmonetta however they are removable the downside is he couldn't watch his fingers on the buttons as he played this is yoko of svang and he took a different approach by having the hinges of the microphone drilled into the harmonetta and then the microphones themselves hover above and below the harmonetta now i'm going to compare the microphone so i'll play in the low octave and middle octave and some of the high octave as well. Here's the C major scale on the standard vocal microphone. No high C.
I will sustain a G major chord and I'll just use the volume knob. And now the on off switch. So I hope you could hear that it was very, very effective. If there was any sound balance issues, it might have been because I, I don't have the microphones taped down to the harmonic to the harmonetta very, very well. So they were kind of shifting a little bit. But this is basically I think the way that Bob Herndon um, set up his. If there was any excess breath noise through the Comica microphone, that's just my fault and not having the windscreens attached to it, it would have been much less of an issue. And also if I was a better harmonetta player, was used to both the blow and the draw feature of this instrument. The, the other better thing to do would be to maybe have some sort of enclosure just like Bob Herndon used. We um, used this microphone system, kind of testing it out as well, at the Spa Harmonica Convention that just happened last month in August, and it was in St. Louis this year, and I was I happened to be a featured performer and also um, a teacher, teaching two different seminars. And in one of the groups that I was performing with on the main stage, it was called the Chris Bauer Harmonic Kings. And in it was Chris Bauer. He was playing lead, so chromatic harmonica and also diatonic harmonica for one song. It featured me on the bass harmonica and also AJ Winmeyer on the 48 chord harmonica and also the harmonetta. And so we used this system and it was very, very successful. So here's a clip of us playing at the Spa Harmonica Convention. I didn't say this already the microphone this microphone system from comico i think i bought it for about 20 dollars it's pretty amazing pretty amazing and um you know only time will tell with the durability of this microphone but i think so far it's really great i hope that you enjoyed this video and found it informative please let me know if you get these microphones and what your experience is with it and also what your other strategies of amplifying and recording the harmonetta has been please give this video a like and please subscribe to my channel all right thank you so much